Bell and Turbo Abbey. How That's old right. is it? Built in 1216, in other words, it will be 800 years old in three years' time. In three years' time. We'll be celebrating the centenary. Have any plans, Ben? Well, the, the plans would be to continue on the work we're doing here for the weddings or pilgrims or retreats or celebration mass of the community. And the plans would be to continue on with that and make it the place. Yes. Who built this place? It was built by King Cahal O'Connor, uh, King of Connor, Cahal Moore of the Wine Red Hand. And he built it in Thanksgiving uh, for the fact that when he was a young boy, he was in flight from the Queen, who was his stepmother. She wanted to kill him and found shelter and protection from the man in charge of the old monastery here, a man called Sheridan. So in Thanksgiving, he uh, said he'd build a church for Sheridan. But actually, he built the church in the wrong place first. He built it in Ballantubber, County of Roscommon. So did he actually build two of them? Small one in Ballantubber, Roscommon. To make up for that, he built this one there. And is it still in Ballantubber, is it? A small one in the graveyard there, and besides St. Bridge as well. And there was there much of a space between the two of them? No, well, he, he actually taught his masons had built the church, and he asked the Sheridan, the man in charge of the old church, how did you like the church I built for you? And he said, you didn't build any at all. And then he asked his masons, did you build a church in Ballantubber? And they said, they did. They built it in the wrong Ballantubber. <laughs> and uh, what order of clergy were in it? Or were the canon regulars of St. Augustine. They were uh, over from France. They were a very prolific order at that time. They, had, uh, they were also in St. Mary's in Dublin, and they would have been in uh, Abinach Moy in those places. No, no the Cistercians were in Abinach Moy. But um, they were uh, canon regulars of St. Augustine. And this church went through hard times, did it? Very hard times. For the, where we are standing now, this was the only place that was roofed for 250 years. It's a cobblestone roof. The rest of it was uh, burned down by Cromwell's army and was roofed for 250 years. So the Mass was celebrated here on this altar here behind me uh, during that 250 years time. We photographed went back to as far as 1846 and 1864 rather of uh, mass being celebrated here and the, the children here and the men and women out there kneeling on the grass and did they try to knock it down they burned it down they burned it down they burned it down and then left it as a ruin as much mm -hmm. other but this one they continued on celebrating mass here in spite of the fact that it was a ruin and how did this one survive when all the rest of them were all over the country it was the don't... people it was the people from the area that continued to come in here and say mass and, and um, attend mass here and pray here um, the orders went away because they were decimated, but the people, the ordinary people from the area came in and, and they continued to say Mass here. So there's a great history behind this. Oh, a great history behind it. The Famine Times too was, it's, it's noted in the Famine Times too, uh, because it was, this was the worst area, but here Westport and Banner Road, hit by the Famine. And 7,000 out of 3,000 3, out of 7,000 people died here in the Famine. It should be worse only for one of, one of the landlords here, Moore of Moore Hall. He had a horse called Corona. He ran him in the Chester Cup in 1846, and he won the Chester Cup in 1846. He won, won 10,000 sovereigns, and he gave it to the starving tenants. And when did the rest restoration efforts begin? The first effort of restoration in 1846, but that was halted by the famine. And then the next restoration effort was in 1887, when um, the nave, or the, the transept, was roofed. And then 1960s, Father Tom Egan roofed the, the nave and then in 1994 we moved out there in the chapter house. Mm. It's a very popular wedding venue isn't it? It is yes actually, it's a very yeah. quiet, we're out of the country, it's quiet mm. and there's a great atmosphere about mm. it. Who would be married here? Any famous people married well, here? Well everyone that gets married here we say it's famous. <laughs> well, we had, we had, we had, we had, uh, we had uh, Pierce Brosnan here, we had Shane Fallon. So you're, you're very famous? Well, they, they are, well, it's, it's, it's a known, it's a well-known place. Does it cost a lot to run a place like this? It does. The cost of heating would be the most expensive, as well as the care of the grounds. We also hope to extend it for A2016. Mm. Uh, the difficulty would be, of course, getting planning permission and with all the modern European uh, regulations, you know, that's the hardest thing. I suppose the other important um, feature here is that it's the Shaughnessaga tree in the garden, and out in the graveyard. That's the time of the penal laws. And that's the whole story of Sir Gareth Sean O'Sullivan, and he's a priest hunter, and he's buried out in the in the, um, in, in, in the graveyard. The graveyard. Right that graveyard goes back to Patrick's time, because the remains of Patrick's church is in the graveyard. So that's so Patrick had a big one. influence in this area around here, all he over the place. He basin. baptized the people here when he came back along the Toher Forest, the Pilgrim Road. He came back 441, and he baptized the people here at the well. Yeah. And that road is still the Pilgrim Road, and it's called Toher Forest. And you run a big event here every Easter? We have the Passion Play here every Easter. Every Easter. How long is that running for? It's 25 years. 25 years, uh, yeah. 
And what's uh, inspired you to start up the Passion Play? Well, I think the atmosphere and the ambience out there. And then, um, because of the history of the Abbey, it's very much in keeping with the Passion of Christ. You know, it's, 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 we call it the triumph of Easter, because really, it's Passion Play, but it is a triumph of, of love and perseverance and faith over all the other advocates. Mm -hmm. uh, things of life. Mm -hmm.